What do you want? Yeah? Thank you very much. Thank you. Says here, a literary community. Very important thing, the literary community. I can take questions, Mick, Galissa, here in the community. Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask the question that uh, is sort of a square one type question that was asked me uh, last week. And that is, how long did it take you to write that? <laughs> Uh, this book was written, now, you know, Mick and Melissa, you can join me up here if you want. Uh, but this book was written actually over a long time while I was doing other things. And, you know, my life was going through tremendous changes. Like, I met someone and fell in love and got married. That, that, probably the big change. And I would say the first one to the last one was a good 10 years, during which I was writing all kinds of other stuff, too, and, and other books, even. Um, but, yeah, when they started coming, uh, I'd say, uh, I, I first had to sign this sort of inner contract that I understood I would have wheelbarrows of projections on these things and might never get anywhere with them. Uh, and it was a good four or five stories in that I began to think, maybe I have a book of these. And, uh, and then, yes, yes, there's a story near the end that when I finish, I, okay, I've definitely got a book now. And the last story, uh, was uh, the last story in the book was actually the last I read, uh, wrote, uh, closing credits. Uh, and I said, well, this book needs to have a closing credits story. So would you say that you took this uh, book a lot less seriously than you usually take a book? <laughs> you know, one hates to say so. Well, I know, but you, <laughs> no. but you said something. <laughs> but, uh, it was definitely fun. I can I can say, as I think I told you the other night, that at at certain points when writing this book, I actually laughed out loud when I came up with something, and it was fun. And and is that a bad thing? You know, to to feel that release from your creative energy. No, I'm working on an idea that it's a good thing because yeah. I and you said yeah. to me also. Uh, yeah. Something about it, you know. but, uh, and ima imagine little little uh, little moviola as if you, as if this is just a, a thing you had kind of kind of tossed off. But uh, I just I'm just wondering if maybe it's better. If, yeah, if you know, it, it makes you too seriously. It makes you think, or, or I think that's appropriate for certain sensibilities. Mm -hmm. I mean, I happen to see Carl Nausgaard over there. My struggle, you know. It's, six or seven volume autobiography, slightly fictional. I, I can't imagine him laughing and shrugging off anything he no, wrote. I bet he does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what the makes... struggle part, this, the grim struggle part, is uh, it's an act, it's performance. I bet, yeah. I bet he's sitting in his, whatever people live in Norway, just laughing and laughing and laughing. It is Norway, right? It's yeah. not Sweden. It is Sweden is uh, the girl with the dragon tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I uh, certainly, it is a tremendous gift to have uh, both the, some sort of artistic calling and then time, energy, support enough to express it. And this book comes out of a joy. I'd like to think that it also makes statements, even even angry anti-capitalist statements about you know the, the superficiality of our culture and stuff. But it was one of those where I saw a mad impulse and valued it. I, I would, and I think it's partly my own sensibility. I'm not as sober-sided as uh, Karl Nausgaard. My people come from a warm and sunny place, and uh, <laughs> and I, I think it's I think it uh, was a discovery. 
a man can live to 75 without having seen Halley's Comet, <laughs> says, uh, says uh, Sam Beckett, actually. That's in, I think, the first one, my boy. You're not 75. Yeah, yeah, and getting it. But you saw <laughs> Night, the comet, and, so. uh, and, you know, I, I stumbled on this idea. And it was definitely one of those books that I, I waited for inspiration until the very last story. It was, it was not one of the books where I got up and worked on it every day. I waited, and then one would come in. And of course, in the process of writing, it was plain old grinding, rewriting, that sort of thing. But one would come in, and there was usually a first draft by hand within a, a, a day or so. Then would come the very familiar grind and rewrite, moving things around, sometimes finishing them, and then realizing after five submissions, oh, I, in this case, the editors are right, I messed up, I need to, right. 10, 10, 20, 20 rejections. But, but yeah, there were a couple of cases where I made changes after after I thought it was finished, you know, all that, all that old craft stuff. Um, but the first go round, I, I always sort of waited until I had a clue, and then took it. Yeah. Well, it, Mick writes very funny stuff. <laughs> he, uh, I would imagine, professed may do that. Yeah, he does. Uh, I, I laugh myself. I remember, I think, one of the first readings I ever did. Uh, a, a small audience, I think smaller than this, and, uh, uh, and, and I think four of the people there, I think there were like six people there, four of them were the four friends of the other person on the bill, there were three of us reading, and there was a guy whose name escapes me out, who read first, I went second, and the, the young woman of the friends went third, and uh, the, the, the guy in, uh, in front of me, he read this sort of Metafiction thing about a guy writing a story about a guy writing a story about a guy writing a story, and, oh. and and so one of the friends sitting in the front row during question time uh, uh, pointed and said, "Your story started pretty good, but then it turned to shit. Why did you let that story go to shit?" <laughs> and the poor guy just started shrinking. You know, you know. Then she pointed at me and says, "I have a question for you too." I'm like, I'm waiting to get killed. And she goes, your story is pretty funny, but did you mean it to be funny? <laughs> <laughs> well, there is a serious side of, did you mean it to be funny? You know, when, when she says, you know, your, your impulse was lighthearted, I forget exactly, you know, you first, the first reaction is, wait a second, I'm <laughs> writing good stuff here. It's not just completely relaxed. You know? I remember Beck once asked to, to describe what his lyrics were about. And he said, well, you know, it's small, personal things. But as soon as the, the, the interviewer said, so it's like gobbledygook? He said, no, no, it's not gobbledygook. No, no, it, it just. <laughs> Just uh, trying to have fun and be interesting. And I, uh, there is this, there is this resistance that you feel against saying your, your, your stuff is just for laughs. But a laugh is a very, a very serious and honored. Thing. I feel like the humor is harder in yeah. many cases, but, and yeah. some, and I don't know if maybe fiction tends to lend itself to that a bit more, but. There is an interplay, and there's dialogue, and there's so many levels, and you have so many. It's I find it engaging with all my sin and yeah. that stuff. But I think it depends on the person, but sort of like for, for both of you guys. Fiction notoriously allows for alternative perspectives. We saw that especially in Professed, which had the professor, the adjunct, and the student, mm -hmm. and poetry. Notoriously, of course, there are all there are. There are some humorous poems, but there. <laughs> poetry is notoriously one person's utterance. Yeah. You don't, you don't get the other perspectives. And, and that's actually the thing. Um, I didn't get the chance, but I had a, a so 
thinking about it, that interplay of people's voices is mm -hmm. kind of a thing that I'd like to push because I think yeah. that's where you do find the humor in a lot of things. And, yeah. And those spaces between and that conversation. Yeah. And I think it'd be interesting as sort of poems from different people's perspective in the same family and having that kind of interplay yeah. to create their joint truth. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, uh, I've been staring at one woman's book here. Ann Carson mm -hmm. writes poetry that is serious and also quite funny. Mm -hmm. And there's there's dialogue she creates there. Anyway, we're, we're talking more than taking any questions, but <laughs> yeah. it's not always that thing. Well, that's the idea. I think I wanted to ask you, was, was Mick your uh, teacher? Um, informally. He's never officially been my teacher, but I, I toss things over to him all the time. I think having somebody who's a fiction writer able to look at your stuff and somebody who, who knows you, especially as, as well as Nick's known me for, I mean, you know, like over, over a decade for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 13, 14 years. 14 years, so it's been very helpful. Yeah, we worked at Cal together. That was my, my first the job when I was in graduate school. Oh, the graduate right. assistant at Cal. Cal, Cal, Cal yeah. Uh, so, so. Where is Cal Loop based now? Is it still it's still at a &M. It's officially published by Johns Hopkins, and it's, but their offices are there. It's this one little room. It's like a closet. At least it was the last time I was yeah. there. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a closet in the English department. And, well, and it's kind of funny because you never think there are these great writers who are involved with it, and, the, and they bring people in, and it's just phenomenal, but it's in the middle. Well, they're not in the English department anymore. Right? Oh, they're in right. the Aggie that's stuff. Right. The English department moved to a brand new building. Calhoun stayed behind in the old building. And I've heard Dr. Rell's very happy about that again. <laughs> so. No comment. <laughs> no, but um, it, it's been great. As I mentioned, the, the writing workshop was great. I was actually going to mention, assuming it's all right, Round Top, mm -hmm. which is uh, they also have a really great um, program here going on uh, specifically for poetry. But, and they bring in all sorts of writers. And, and it's kind of these quiet little spots that you don't know about that you find, kind of like Melbourne itself, being here, being part of that community. Mm -hmm. The um, the I would I would imagine it's tough in a workshop. You know, I haven't been in a where I haven't been a member of a workshop for a long time. But I would imagine it's tough in a workshop to bring in something that's funny. That the workshop lends itself more to. To stories that sh shape a pain and take you to the hey, this will hurt more. You know, you know, John, my experience doing workshops, running workshops, is totally the opposite. And that Tell me. Is, people love funny stories. Yeah. They will praise a funny story that yeah. isn't very good, you know, yeah. over <laughs> a much better story that's serious. They just, you know, maybe because there's so much seriousness yeah, yeah. that it's really nice to get a little relief from it or whatever. Classes in general love, love yeah. funny stories. You know, as I thought about it, I've seen, and, and it's partly because humor is hard. Yeah. And for somebody who's 21 to bring in a genuinely funny piece mm -hmm. is, is rare. Humor is hard. If, you, if somebody wants a book signed, of course, with pleasure, if that's what you got. Yeah, maybe we should. Take on, on, the, on the humor thing, I, I did a workshop when I was in graduate school. And I wrote a cab driving story. It's a story I read the last time I was here at Malvern. It's called Riff Riff. It's a good story. Um, but I meant it to be sort of serious and violent. I remember I was reading it out loud to the class. People started laughing. And started laughing more and more <laughs> as, as this beatdown happened, this fight happened. And so you, it's up to the audience to interpret the, the humor, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's cultural. Thing too. This culture that when I mentioned Nausgaard before, you know, all, all over Europe, but especially in the north and in the east, serious, serious is poetry. Poetry is serious. Yeah. You know, it, it's culture. Man. If you're writing poetry, you're writing against the power, and you're you're, you're engaged with you know fundamental issues of existence. You know, and there isn't there isn't. <laughs> A tradition of lightness, whereas at least in our culture, you know, some of the oldest things in our culture are funny, yeah. like like plays out of the Greek, and and uh, and yeah, and a lot of ancient fable is funny, 
Sometimes it's 